Um, so I'm up for my first re-election uh, on November 6th, and you know I want to continue to serve the 46th district and work on uh, key issues around healthcare, um, you know, supporting our institutions of higher education and K through 12. Um, I initially ran two years ago um, because I wanted to continue advocacy. Uh, my background is in social work, and as a social worker, um, one of the, the key jobs is um, uh, being an advocate uh, for individuals and for communities. And I very much see uh, my role as a state legislator um, as being an advocate for, for the district. So one of my main priorities in Jefferson City um, has been around healthcare issues, uh, trying to expand access to healthcare, specifically for uh, low-income individuals. Um, I uh, am a strong supporter of Medicaid expansion. We're one of 17 states that has yet to expand our Medicaid program to support low-income Missourians. Uh, I think it's a very uh, important investment into communities. Um, but also another healthcare issue that I have prioritized has been around the opiate epidemic. Um, Missouri has not been immune to that issue that our whole nation is facing. Um, so last year I filed legislation uh, to expand access to healthcare for low income uh, women um, who lose coverage just 60 days postpartum uh, after giving birth. And so um, that's a bill that I filed that we actually got passed and signed into law. Uh, worked across the aisle uh, with Republicans to get that done. Um, and so that extends healthcare access for new moms um, to get uh, substance use disorder treatment and mental health care uh, for an additional 12 months uh, after uh, first giving birth. Um, we've seen a significant increase in Missouri in um, uh, new moms uh, suffering from addiction. We've seen over the past 10 years in Missouri a 538% increase in neonatal abstinence syndrome, so that baby is being born with withdrawal, withdrawal symptoms. Um, so we know that new moms are struggling uh, with the disease of addiction, um, and uh, my bill uh, and others' bills uh, that we got passed um, um, is, is meant to support those new moms. Yeah, so if I'm reelected, uh, I want to continue to work on different healthcare issues, different um, harm reduction policies that we can file um, to address the opiate epidemic, uh, which is a significant public health issue uh, in our state. Um, I also want to work on issues um, to uh, support low income families. Um, one of the bills that uh, I want to prioritize next year if I'm reelected is to regulate payday lenders. Um, and Right now, we have um, payday lenders that um, really target low-income families, and families uh, get trapped in um, a cycle of debt, um, and we don't have a lot of regulation around uh, those interest rates. In Missouri, they average over 400%, um, so that's something that I would like to work on. Um, on the national level, we have regulated that. Um, uh, to protect uh, active duty military, and so I think that we should also, uh, which is a great was great national legislation, um, but I think that we also um, can extend that to veterans and to civilians. Yeah, I mean, um, as a Democrat um, in the super minority, uh, it's uh, vital for me to build relationships across the aisle uh, and find key issues um, that. Um, have bipartisan support, um, and I think that my record over the last two years um, illustrates uh, my ability to work across the aisle on key issues uh, to get important legislation passed that uh, supports communities in every district. Yeah, um, so um, I am a proud supporter of reproductive rights. Um, I am a former community organizer. I've actually worked at the Planned Parenthood here in Columbia. Um, you know, I believe that those decisions are between a woman and her doctor, um, and I'm very disappointed with uh, the legislation that has been passed over the years in Missouri that has restricted access to constitutionally protected health care in our country. Um, so specific legislation, um, I, I think that um, I don't know what's going to be filed next year. I, I am sure that my colleagues um, are probably looking at different legislation that we could file uh, to make sure that we can expand access uh, to uh, reproductive rights in Missouri. Um, and so those are, are things that are probably still being planned out right now. Um, so I, I need to have discussions with my colleagues to see what might be filed next year uh, so that we can uh, support access to reproductive rights in Missouri. Yeah, so uh, the precision medicine um, project that's going on at the university is something that I'm excited about. Um, I've had some discussions uh, with folks at the university. I think it's a real opportunity um, when it comes to innovation and technology. 
Um, I think, you know, the university, we're so lucky to have them in our community. They're a strong economic, economic driver. And so, you know, I think whatever we can do as lawmakers when it comes to uh, supporting increased funding for the university is something that I'm very supportive of. Yeah, so, you know, I think when it comes to our budget, uh, unfortunately, we continue to um, pass legislation that benefits special interest, um, and I think that we really need to have more discussions about ways that we can increase our general revenue so that we can adequately fund many public programs, including uh, our institutions of higher education. Unfortunately, we've seen a real decrease in uh, the past 30 years when it comes to adequately funding higher education, and the burden has really been shifted to students. Um, and I think that's very unfortunate. And so I think as legislators, um, we need to have more discussions about increased revenue, um, perhaps auditing our tax credit system, um, and then uh, also um, not always uh, you know, going towards cutting taxes, um, especially when we can't adequately. So, you know, um, our K through 12 funding um, is um, very critical and important. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, last year we underfunded transportation by almost $200 million. And what that means is that um, local school districts have to uh, make their own cuts in the budget because we have um, underfunded transportation. We have um, at least 20 school districts that now are down to four days a week. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think that students across the state in every school district should be going five days a week. Um, but that also means that on those days for low-income uh, children, those are you know additional two meals that they don't have, um, and so I think that's a significant issue. Um, and again, you know, with funding, I think uh, legislators we need to um, stop cutting taxes for special interests. We need to talk about ways we can increase revenue, have discussions about uh, you know increases perhaps in our tobacco taxes, which is one of the lowest in the country. Um, and, and so I think there are a lot of things that uh, we need to look at when it comes to the budget so that we can fund our K-12 public schools.